It's a cozy, rainy day at home. Time for baking and cooking in my kitchen, reading and watching a cozy show, harvesting homegrown food from the garden, and enjoying the slow rhythm of home life. I'm making a honey latte out of mushroom coffee. It's something new that I've never tried and it's quite good. My family usually eats eggs of some kind or oatmeal for breakfast. Today I made fried eggs and English muffins with fresh peaches. I make breakfast first for my little ones because they usually want to get outside and play. Then I make something for myself and my older girls. I like to sit by the window in the morning light and look outside while I eat. Late summer is here. There's change in the air. Everything is at its peak. The air smells of harvest, rain, and coolness. Everything changes so fast in this North Country. The garden is bursting with produce and the late summer rainstorms burst forth and quickly dry out as fast as they come. I like to cook up meat in the crock pot for the week ahead to use it in my meal prep. So I'm putting in a few pieces of beef to cook so we can have shredded beef tacos later in the week. I'm often doing little preps like this throughout the day to help my kitchen run smoothly all week. It's summertime, so I thought I would share some of my favorite books that I've been reading this summer and also some of the books that we've been listening to on audio. We love listening to books on audio and I really love having that for the little kids because it's a nice thing that you can just do when it, they're hot and they're tired. I like to lay out a blanket on the floor and have them get their pillows and stuffed animals and we just turn the audio on and it's just a time to kind of be quiet and relax and just cool down after being outside usually all morning. The three things we've been listening to are The Van Gogh Deception, it's a kid's book and it's really, really fun and it has lots of you know, twists and turn and a mystery and a suspense, for, but for little kids and it's really fun, they've enjoyed that. We've been listening to The History of the World and um, The Five Little Peppers. So those are the ones that we've been listening on audio and I think that you can get the Five Little Peppers for free if you have your own Audible membership. This isn't sponsored. I just was remembering that it was a freebie and it was a really fun one for the kids to listen to. I've been reading this summer this great series right here that I borrowed from my friend. I read these back when I was a teenager and I got them from her, Little House, The Rocky Ridge Years. And I don't know how many are in this series. I think about six or seven and about halfway through, but these books are so fun. It gives a different view of Laura and Almanzo and raising their little girl Rose out in the Ozarks. And it's been really fun just, um, just seeing a little bit about their life. And one of the biggest take takeaways that I got from this book was how hard everybody worked and um, how much they just put into their life and their food and how they were really just so in the moment with everything that they did. like. They enjoyed the everyday so thoroughly and they saw the beauty in it. But I mean, there's also the stark reality. They also worked so hard 
And it's, it's just interesting seeing all of that. Like I'm blown away sometimes when I look back and think about my grandmother and how hard she worked and my great grandmother and just the generations of hardworking people that have farmed the land. And I love these kind of books because they just really bring back um, a lot of reminiscing to me. And I love the history. So these type of books, I just, they, they relax me. I really enjoy them. And I kind of feel like a little kid, again, just, you know, going outside on a picnic blanket and reading a good book. I've been really enjoying the Rocky Ridge Little House on the Prairie series, but I also enjoy A Good Mystery and The Secret at the Hermitage by Carolyn Keene, who is the author of the Nancy Drew books. This is really, really fun to have these vintage books. I love the old drawings <laughs> in the inside of these books. But this is actually the Dana Girl mystery stories by the same author that wrote Nancy Drew. And whenever I find any of these old books, I just pick them up because they're fun and I feel like a little kid again getting an old mystery book to read when it's hot outside and you want to just curl up on the couch or outside by you know the creek or going out and just laying out in the sun these are really really good books to read. I found this old classic and I was really happy because I love Roost Out the No Work Garden book and it's a nice vintage classic on the whole layering method you know layering straw and hay for your garden and this is a great book it's so fun to find these vintage ones so if you're out thrift shopping or yard selling definitely look for these old vintage books like this good it's so fun just when you're looking for a garden book and you find one for like 50 cents or a good old mystery so definitely keep your eyes open for books like this when you're out thrifting or yard selling one thing I really love about Ruth Stout is she really thinks outside of the box when it comes to gardening. So I think if you're looking for some alternative gardening ideas, she's the gal to read. So you would definitely enjoy this book, especially if you're a garden lover. And my last book, I don't have a big pile here. I have just been enjoying these books, but I love this summer book by Susan Branch. It is amazing. The pictures, the recipes, the little stories. This is just summer in a book. It's so delightful and so whimsical. Right here she has the anatomy of a cheeseburger and fresh fish tacos. I mean, they just inspire me to start cooking delicious things for our summer food. And you know, it's really funny. We've talked about this before, but this is a used book and I was flipping through it and I found a recipe again. You guys know how much fun I love finding a recipe. And it says 1999 Oregon State Fair, the most wonderful brownies ever. So there's a recipe for these in here. And there's actually the owner of this book bought this book in 1996. So it's so fun having little things like this and having recipes tucked into cookbooks. So. I keep them in and sometimes I even try them out because it's just fun knowing that somebody liked that recipe enough that they stuck it in their cookbook. This isn't just a cookbook, it's really an idea book. She shows about um, building a kitchen garden and how to put in your raised beds and what kind of herbs to choose. She has a whole area of favorite herbs that she likes to grow. It's just a beautiful, beautiful book and it just, it gets you excited about all the lovely things that summer has and I just enjoy it. It shows in here the knot garden. It shows fragrant flowers to grow. She has a thing on camping, lots of recipes, appetizer ideas. I have just enjoyed this book so much just for summer. I've had this for several years and every time it comes summer, I just take it out and I look at it and I enjoy it and I use the recipes and I just feel like it's an, an inspiration to slow living. I have to just share this too. They have an old fashioned picnic menu in here. Bread and butter pickles, pitted black olives, celery stuffed with cream cheese, sprinkled with paprika, salted radishes and green onions, stuffed eggs, fried chicken, potato salad, bean salad, Waldorf salad, watermelon slices, strawberry shortcake, blueberry pie, coconut layered cake, iced tea with lemon, sugar and mint, homemade lemonade, bring along a jar of water for 
just picked wildflowers and the pictures are just adorable. One thing I love about her books is I always feel that when I read them, I really just get in tune with the season and she's so good. All her books are so amazing. She has like winter ones and Christmas ones and all different books, but they just really get you in the mood for the season that you're at. And for me right now, it's been good because summertime has not always been my favorite. I've been asked that before. What is your favorite season? And I used to not like summer as much because it was hot and not as cozy as the other seasons. But over the years, I've actually really, really fallen in love with summer. And I think it can be just as cozy. And now we're at the end of summer and you feel like that smell of fall in the air and on rainy days, it feels even closer. But I'm actually trying to just savor even these last few weeks of summer because it's just special. Like we have such long winters where we live that I really, really like to savor this time and enjoy being out in the sun, going swimming, just cooking really good light fare for breakfast and for picnic. It's just fun to slow down and really enjoy summertime. I know for me, canning season is coming up and I'm gonna be really busy canning and harvesting the garden and all of those wonderful things. So I really try to enjoy June and July and August as time with my family, lots of time at the lake, lots of time just being with family and reading books, spending time outside, getting that fresh air, just enjoying the simple pleasures of summer. So I don't have a huge pile of books here, but I've really been enjoying the ones that I've been looking at this summer. And I would love to hear what you guys are reading. I always love your suggestions. I always go on the computer and check them out. So definitely leave a comment below telling me what you're reading this summer. I have some crystallized honey left in a small honey bucket that I use for my baking. I'm going to make my mom's O. Henry bar recipe, but I changed it up. The original recipe uses corn syrup, not a fan, so I use honey instead. I add one cup of honey to a saucepan on medium heat. To that, I'm going to add one cup of peanut butter. My peanut butter was super clumpy today. I stir it until it's hot and melted and all bubbly. I add the hot mixture to seven to eight cups of Rice Krispies. You're gonna want to stir this mixture up really good. Sometimes I even oil my hands so I can get in there and really mix it up. Pat down into a large 9 by 13 pan. I melt about 2 cups or a bag of semi-sweet chocolate chips with one tablespoon of coconut oil over low heat, stir continually until it's all melted. Pour the melted chocolate onto the Rice Krispie mixture and spread out evenly.
A lot of you have been asking to see the garden. The garden got in a couple weeks late this year due to not feeling that great after our car accident. And this year my daughter Natasha really took on the garden as her project. She's been my garden buddy for several years now, but this year I've been blown away with how much she put into this garden. Daniel and I and the little kids have been her helpers, watering, weeding, or mulching when she needed some extra hands. She started everything from seed indoors that needed it and direct planted the rest. We have a short season up here in the North Country, yet we get a good harvest. I really find it relaxing to go out into the garden and harvest food. It's such a special time. I'm so proud of all her hard work. Everything in the garden is just flourishing. I will be busy canning and freezing up all this good food. Summer is outdoors and creative time, work time and family time, and it goes so fast. My kids love digging in the clay hole and making mud pies and mud pottery. This is what my sink in the bathroom looks like after they washed up for lunch. So yes, there are messes that come with creativity, but I wouldn't have it any other way. And in the end, it all cleans up. Legos on my table for afternoon playtime. Now my daughter and I need a coffee treat. So I'm going to make my granny's cocoa sauce and I'm gonna link that recipe for you in the comment and in the description box. I love making my own chocolate syrup because I know everything that's in it and it's so economical. And ultimately, it tastes 100% better than store-bought, in my opinion.
I make a lot of my own condiments, dressings, and syrups, and I love these squeeze bottles and my glass pitcher for the chocolate syrup. Now for a homemade mocha frap. This is my own made up version, but a couple years ago, I had one in a coffee shop and it was really good. I asked the owner what she did and she said she put a scoop of vanilla ice cream in it for the extra creaminess. Wow, it was like a coffee milkshake. Such a fun summertime treat. First, I make two strong shots of coffee with my AeroPress. I love my AeroPress. I use it all the time. I add a scoop of vanilla ice cream. One and a half to two trays of ice cubes. Three tablespoons of malted milk. This is optional, but it does add a creaminess to it. Three to four tablespoons of homemade chocolate syrup. Two shots of coffee. And half a cup of milk if needed. This recipe makes two large drinks. I like to add a chocolate drizzle inside of the cup for just a little extra flourish. Now you have a delicious homemade drink for the fraction of the cost. I like to make a coffee and read or watch something with my daughters in the afternoon. It's just a nice time to hang out together. It's really important for me to make intentional time with my kids. We love the new show, All Creatures Great and Small. It doesn't follow the books exactly, but the atmosphere, clothing, and acting is wonderful, and we really enjoy it. It's almost dinner time and I have pizza dough rising. I'm making some Neo Neapolitan pizzas with my daughter. I've been cooking with my daughter since she was a little girl. I've said this before, but bring your children into your space. Invite them in to cook and garden with you, to be by your side learning with you. You'll be amazed at how capable and creative children are.
My children have been making pizza with me for years. Pizza is a tradition in our home. Friday nights are pizza nights. I haven't told anyone yet, but this summer, on my husband's days off, we've been filming a pizza course. It dives into all the ways that I use my pizza crust, from par baking, freezing, dessert pizza, homemade sauces, gluten-free pizza, whole wheat pizza, and my neo-neapolitan pizza. It's loaded with videos and recipes and I hope to have it out at the end of September or the beginning of October. I'm gonna be offering a huge sell on it for my YouTube audience. So if you want a discount code, click on the link in the description box and sign up with your email so you can be notified when we launch our course and the sales code. I'm excited for you to take your love for pizza to the next level with our homemade pizza course. We enjoy iced tea during the warmer months. I'm going to make up a pitcher to go with dessert. I boil some water, four cups or so, and then I add one third to one half cup of sugar into the boiling water and stir until dissolved. I put in three to four tea bags and I let that steep for 15 to 20 minutes. I slice up a whole lemon for one pitcher of tea. Take the steep tea and add it to a pitcher with cold water. After dinner, it's iced tea and O'Henry bars and a good card game with my son. But recently I heard playing cards and games lowers stress levels, increases endorphins, AKA happy hormones, which makes total sense. We usually play a game every day. Seriously, I think they are so good for little brains, boosting memory skills, math, logical reasoning, and critical thinking. We also use games as an alternative to screen time, and it's a great way to end the day. 